Question 1. When you see this yellow sign, you should A. Always stop at the crosswalk. B. Stop at the crosswalk until a crossing guard signals for you to go. C. Be prepared to stop if children are in the crosswalk. The correct answer. C. Be prepared to stop if children are in the crosswalk. A sign with five sides signifies that you are approaching a school area. Stay attentive and be ready to halt if you notice children crossing the road. This caution is especially important to ensure the safety of pedestrians, particularly students using crosswalks near schools. Question 2. To prevent tailgating, drivers should follow the A. 1 second rule. B. 2 second rule. C. 3 second rule. The correct answer. C. 3 second rule. Many rear end collisions happen due to tailgating, where drivers follow too closely. To prevent this, follow the 3 second rule. When the vehicle in front of you passes a fixed point, like a sign, count 1001. 1002, 1003. If you reach the same point before finishing the count, you're too close and should create more distance. Question 3. Always stop before crossing railroad tracks when A. There isn't room on the other side for you to completely cross the tracks. B. The railroad crossing is located in a city or town that has frequent train traffic. C. You are transporting two or more young children in a passenger vehicle. The correct answer. A. There isn't room on the other side for you to completely cross the tracks. Always be prepared for the possibility of a train on any track, in any direction, at any moment. If you have to stop after crossing railroad tracks, ensure you wait until you can fully clear the tracks before proceeding. Make certain that your vehicle is entirely past the tracks before coming to a stop. This cautious approach is crucial for avoiding collisions with trains and ensuring your safety. Question 4. Which of the following statements about blind spots is true? A. Blind spots are eliminated if you have one outside mirror. B. Large trucks have bigger blind spots than most passenger vehicles. C. Blind spots can be checked by looking in your rearview mirror. The correct answer. B. Large trucks have bigger blind spots than most passenger vehicles. While vehicles may have rear view and side mirrors, blind spots remain that these mirrors can't reveal. This is especially true for large trucks, which have more substantial blind spots compared to regular cars. These blind spots are areas around the vehicle that the mirrors don't cover, making it crucial to be cautious when driving alongside or behind such vehicles. Question 5. This sign means A. No U-turn B. No turning C. No left turn The correct answer. A. No U-turn this sign serves as a clear indication that performing a U-turn is not permitted. At intersections where this sign is displayed, you are not allowed to execute a maneuver to reverse your direction and travel the opposite way. Question 6. You should drive on the shoulder to pass a car. A. If the vehicle ahead of you is turning left. B. Under no circumstances. C. If the shoulder is wide enough. The correct answer. B. Under no circumstances. Passing on the right is allowed only when you can stay on the road while doing so. Avoid passing on the shoulder, as the other driver might not anticipate your presence and could pull off the road unexpectedly. Question 7. This sign indicates that A. There is a steep hill ahead. B. No trucks are allowed on the upcoming hill. C. A logging road is ahead. The correct answer. A. There is a steep hill ahead. Warning signs use a yellow background with black symbols. They caution drivers about potential road conditions. This specific sign indicates an upcoming steep hill. To navigate safely, drivers should reduce speed, prepare to manage their vehicle's speed, and safeguard their brakes from excessive strain or wear. Question 8. When turning left at an intersection. A. You should always yield to oncoming traffic and pedestrians. B. Oncoming traffic and pedestrians should yield to you. C. You should never yield to oncoming traffic and pedestrians. The correct answer. A. You should always yield to oncoming traffic and pedestrians. When drivers want to make left turns, they should give the right of way to oncoming traffic that is moving straight ahead. Additionally, 
it's important for drivers to always prioritize pedestrians by yielding to them. Question 9. To make a right turn at a corner, you a. May not enter the bicycle lane. b. Should only merge into the bicycle lane if you stop before turning. c. Must merge into the bicycle lane before turning. The correct answer. c. Must merge into the bicycle lane before turning. When about to make a right turn with a bicycle lane present, you should merge into the bicycle lane within 200 feet before reaching the corner, and then proceed with your turn. Prior to merging, carefully check for any cyclists in your way to ensure a safe maneuver. Question 10. A solid yellow line next to a broken yellow line means that vehicles A. Driving in both directions may pass. B. Next to the broken line may pass. C. Next to the solid line may pass. The correct answer. B. Next to the broken line may pass. Yellow lines on the road divide lanes for traffic moving in opposite directions. If there's a broken yellow line beside your lane, it indicates you're allowed to pass other vehicles when it's safe to do so. Question 11. When parking your vehicle parallel to the curb on a level street. A. Your front wheels must be turned toward the street. B. Your wheels must be within 18 inches of the curb. C. One of your rear wheels must touch the curb. The correct answer. B. Your wheels must be within 18 inches of the curb. When parking next to a curb on a flat road, ensure that both the front and rear wheels of your vehicle are aligned parallel to the curb. Additionally, keep them within 18 inches of the curb's edge. Question 12. This road sign means A. Watch for people crossing your path. B. No passing zone. C. Work zone ahead. The correct answer. C. Work zone ahead. This orange warning sign serves as a notification to drivers about an upcoming road work zone. It's a reminder that as you approach and drive through this area, you should maintain a high level of awareness. Pay special attention to temporary traffic control measures that are put in place to manage the flow of vehicles safely through the work zone. Question 13. Changing from one lane to another is best done. A. Quickly and often. B. When a car is in your blind spot. C. Gradually and carefully. The correct answer. C. Gradually and carefully. Changing lanes should be done gradually and with caution. Only switch lanes when it's truly needed. Keep in mind that each lane change raises the risk of a traffic accident. Question 14. When entering traffic after being parked at a curb, you A. Should drive more slowly than other traffic for 200 feet. B. Should wait for a large enough gap to get up to the speed of traffic. C. Should wait for the first two vehicles to pass, then drive into the lane. The correct answer. B. Should wait for a large enough gap to get up to the speed of traffic. When you're merging onto city streets or highways, it's crucial to pick a moment when there's enough space in the traffic for your vehicle to accelerate and reach the same speed as the vehicles already on the road. This ensures a smooth and safe transition into the flow of traffic. Question 15. To know where traffic is behind you. A. Frequently check your rear view mirror. B. Turn and look out your back window. C. Keep other vehicles out of your blind spots. The correct answer. A. Frequently check your rear view mirror. It's essential for drivers to regularly glance at their rear view mirrors. This practice helps them maintain awareness of the vehicles behind them and their positions on the road. This awareness is crucial for making informed driving decisions and responding effectively to changing traffic conditions. Question 16. You must yield the right of way to an emergency vehicle that is using its siren and flashing lights by A. Driving as closely to the right edge of the road as possible and stopping. B. Moving into the right lane and driving slowly until it has passed. C. Stopping immediately, even if you are within an intersection. The correct answer. A. Driving as closely to the right edge of the road as possible and stopping. When entering a freeway, try to reach a speed similar to the vehicles already on the freeway. But if they're going faster than the speed limit, don't go faster than what's legal. The idea is to blend in well with traffic and smoothly become a part of it, all while following the speed rules. Question 17. When merging onto the freeway, you should be driving. A. 
at or near the speed of the freeway traffic. b. At the legal speed limit. c. More slowly than the freeway traffic. The correct answer. a. At or near the speed of the freeway traffic. When merging onto a freeway, it's recommended to match or closely approach the speed of the vehicles already on the freeway. However, if the traffic on the freeway is moving faster than the legal speed limit, you should not exceed that speed limit when entering. The goal is to smoothly integrate with the flow of traffic while adhering to speed regulations. Question 18. You should not make sudden stops in front of large trucks and buses because a. Small vehicle drivers cannot adequately see large trucks and buses in their rearview mirrors. b. Large trucks and buses, due to their size and weight, require longer distances to stop than smaller passenger vehicles. c. Large trucks and buses travel at a higher speed than small vehicles. The correct answer. b. Large trucks and buses, due to their size and weight, require longer distances to stop than smaller passenger vehicles. Larger vehicles need more time to stop and get moving compared to smaller ones. Suddenly braking in front of a big vehicle is risky as they might not halt in time to prevent a crash due to their longer stopping distance. Question 19. If you are involved in a traffic collision, you are required to complete and submit a written report to the DMV. A. Only if you or the other driver is injured. B. If there is property damage in excess of $1,000 or if there are any injuries. C. Only if you are at fault. The correct answer. B. If there is property damage in excess of $1,000 or if there are any injuries. If a collision leads to fatality, significant injury, minor injury, or property damage exceeding $1,000, all drivers involved have the obligation to submit a report to the DMV within 10 days. In certain situations, like when a driver is unable to do so, their insurance representative, broker, or legal representative can file the report on their behalf. This procedure ensures accurate record keeping and compliance with legal requirements. Question 20. This is the shape and color of A. Sign. A. Stop. B. Wrong way. C. Yield. The correct answer. C. Yield. Triangular signs pointing downward signal that drivers must yield the right of way. As you approach a yield sign, reduce your speed appropriately based on the present situation and come to a stop if needed. If stopping is required, do so at a marked stop line, if one is present. Question 21. If you are driving near a large commercial vehicle, you should a. Follow the large vehicle closely to reduce wind drag on your vehicle. b. Avoid driving beside it for long stretches of time. c. Drive on its right side when on curves and hills. The correct answer. b. Avoid driving beside it for long stretches of time. Due to their significant size, large commercial vehicles have considerable blind spots on both sides. To enhance safety, it's advisable to minimize driving alongside them for extended periods. This reduces the risk of not being visible to the truck driver and promotes overall road safety. Question 22. You just sold your vehicle. You must notify the DMV within days. A. 5. B. 10. C. 15. The correct answer. A. 5. When you sell or transfer ownership of a vehicle, it's your responsibility to inform the DMV, Department of Motor Vehicles, within a time frame of 5 days. This notification ensures that the DMV's records are accurate and up-to-date regarding the ownership change of the vehicle. Question 23. You have been involved in a minor traffic collision with a parked vehicle and you can't find the owner. You must a. Leave a note on the vehicle. b. Report the collision without delay to the city police or, in unincorporated areas, to the California Highway Patrol. c. Both of the above. The correct answer. c. Both of the above. After colliding with a parked car or property, it's important to take responsibility. Attach a note with your name, phone number, and address to what you hit. Additionally, report the collision to either the local city police or, if the incident occurred in an unincorporated area, to the California Highway Patrol, CHP. This ensures proper communication and compliance with legal obligations. Question 24. If weather or light conditions require you to have your lights on while driving. A. Use your parking lights. B. Use your high beams. C. Use your low beams. The correct answer. 
C. Use your low beams. In situations involving fog, snow, or rain, it's best to utilize your vehicle's low beam headlights. High beam lights, when used, tend to bounce off the moisture particles in the air, creating a blinding glare that makes it considerably harder to see the road ahead. To ensure optimal visibility, stick to using your low beam headlights in such weather conditions. Question 25. This sign means A. Merge right. B. Divided highway begins. C. Lane ends. The correct answer. C. Lane ends. This sign signals that the right lane will come to an end soon. Drivers in that lane will need to merge into another lane. Question 26. When passing another vehicle. A. Pass the vehicle as slowly as possible. B. Drive at the same speed as the vehicle you are passing. C. Pass the vehicle as safely and as quickly as possible. The correct answer. C. Pass the vehicle as safely and as quickly as possible. When you're overtaking a vehicle that's moving in the same direction as you, pass it swiftly so you can see the road ahead clearly again. Only shift back to your original lane once you're able to see both headlights of the past vehicle in your rearview mirror. This ensures you've created a safe distance before returning to your lane. Question 27. Before returning to your original lane after passing another vehicle, you should A. Beep your horn. B. See both headlights of the past vehicle in your rearview mirror. C. Flash your headlights. The correct answer. B. See both headlights of the past vehicle in your rearview mirror. When passing another vehicle is allowed, make sure to observe both headlights of the past vehicle in your rearview mirror. Only proceed to return to your original lane once you can see both headlights clearly. This ensures a safe distance and proper timing for merging back into your lane. Question 28. Which of the following is true about roadways on bridges and overpasses in cold, wet weather? A. They tend to freeze before the rest of the road does. B. They do not freeze because they are made of concrete. C. They tend to freeze after the rest of the road does. The correct answer. A. They tend to freeze before the rest of the road does. Bridges and overpasses are prone to freezing earlier than the surrounding road. This is because they are exposed to cold air from both the top and bottom. As a result, these elevated structures can develop icy patches sooner than the rest of the road. It's important to be cautious when driving on them, as these icy spots might not be immediately visible and can create hazardous conditions. Question 29. There is a vehicle stopped on the right shoulder of the road with its hazard lights on. You should A. Change lanes to the left and speed up. B. Slow down and pass very carefully. C. Stop your vehicle until you can see what has happened. The correct answer. B. Slow down and pass very carefully. When you notice a vehicle with its hazard lights activated up ahead, it's important to reduce your speed. This could indicate a collision or some kind of road emergency ahead. If you come across such a situation, consider slowing down and being cautious. If someone asks for help, you should stop and provide assistance if you can do so safely. Alternatively, if it's necessary to proceed, do so very carefully, keeping in mind the potential risks associated with the situation on the road. Question 30. Use your headlights on rainy, snowy, or foggy days. A. To keep your engine warm. B. So others can see your vehicle. C. To warn others of bad weather conditions. The correct answer. B. So others can see your vehicle. During adverse weather conditions like rain, snow, or fog, your vehicle might be hard for other drivers to spot. In such cases, using your headlights enhances your vehicle's visibility. If the weather is severe enough to necessitate using your windshield wipers, you are also required to turn on your low beam headlights. This combination ensures your visibility to others and promotes road safety in challenging weather. Question 31. Check your rear view mirrors. A. Often to see how traffic is moving behind you. B. To see if a vehicle is in your blind spot. C. Only when you are slowing down. The correct answer. A. Often to see how traffic is moving behind you. While driving, avoid focusing on just one point for too long. Instead, regularly glance at your rearview mirrors to keep track of the positions of vehicles around you. This helps maintain awareness of your surroundings and enhances driving safety. Question 32. 
If you drive faster than other vehicles on a road with one lane moving in each direction and continually pass the other cars, you will a. Get you to your destination much more quickly and safely. b. Increase your chances of a collision. c. Help prevent traffic congestion. The correct answer. b. Increase your chances of a collision. It's advisable to minimize passing on two-lane roads. Each time you pass another vehicle, your chances of being involved in a collision rise. Question 33. You should signal continuously while turning because it A. Is illegal to turn off your signal before completing a turn. B. Let's other drivers know what your intentions are. C. Is always unsafe to turn off a signal before completing a turn. The correct answer. B. Let's other drivers know what your intentions are. Always use your turn signals to indicate when you're turning, changing lanes, slowing down, or coming to a stop. This alerts other drivers, motorcyclists, cyclists, and pedestrians about your intentions, promoting safer interactions on the road. Question 34. You should turn on your headlights. A. One half hour after sunset. B. When stopped at a railroad crossing. C. When parked at a school. The correct answer. A. One half hour after sunset. Headlights are required to be used during the time span from half an hour after sunset to half an hour before sunrise. Additionally, when windshield wipers are needed due to rain or snow, and whenever visibility drops below 1,000 feet, headlights should be turned on. Even when driving on small country or mountain roads in sunny conditions, headlights are recommended to enhance visibility and safety. Question 35. You are approaching an intersection with a steady yellow traffic light. If you have not already entered the intersection, you should a. Speed up to beat the red light b. Reduce your speed and proceed carefully through the intersection c. Come to a safe stop The correct answer c. Come to a safe stop When you encounter a solid yellow light at a traffic signal, get ready to come to a stop. If you're already inside the intersection when the yellow light appears, try to leave the intersection promptly and safely. This helps maintain the flow of traffic and ensures that vehicles behind you can also adhere to the signal. Question 36. This sign means A. Truck centering B. Truck exit only C. Steep downgrade ahead The correct answer. C. Steep downgrade ahead This sign serves as a warning that there's a significant downhill slope approaching on the road. It's essential for drivers to be cautious and proactive in checking their brakes when encountering this sign. 